mirrors, keep speeding up as soon as the clutch is back up, checking the mirrors. Is it worth a lane change or are we going to overtake? Keep speeding up and we can see the answer. Yeah. Anything going to cut us up last second and come through the gap? Fine then. Block change four to six, so we're going to overtake the silver. Let's go to six, let's get to 70 and then see. Because we can justify being here now because we're actually gaining on the silver. Do you see what I mean? There's a reason, there's a justification. Keep braking now. Looking at the same time, clutch up. Do we need to put it back down? Keep centre of your lane. Oh, I'm very impressed with that, Lauren. I thought you'd have definitely stopped because that one coming. You've um, you've impressed me. So, Lauren, moving on to the next part of the lesson, we've opted to do some carriageway driving. We got this. First of all, just want to get your thoughts on this sign. I know we've done some faster roads before. Just want to get your thoughts on where is it? That one. Um, I know you know it's national speed limit and I know you know what a single uh, what the speed limit is for a single carriageway and what a dual is I've asked you many times before how would you differentiate how would you know the difference between a dual carriageway and a single um, the barrier in between the lanes yes so does it need to be two lanes in order for it to be a dual carriageway no, so you can have you can have one lane here, a physical divider in the middle, and another lane for the other side, and it's still a dual carriageway because it's divided. It's two roads, so it's dual. What about if it's just paint in the middle? So it's just a layer of paint and then another road. Is that divided then? Do you think? No. No, you could still straight across, couldn't you? Yeah. So for that reason. It's classed as a single carriageway, and the reason that's important to differentiate is because you're going to need to know what speeds to do. Yeah. Or else you could get caught out. What about um, this sign, though? I mean, it's pretty, it's not obvious what it actually means unless you know. Why do you think it's this picture and not an actual number for us? Um, because it's different for like different vehicles. Fantastic. So if we're driving a trailer, it's going to be different if we're driving a lorry, it's going to be different again. So it's our job to know what our national speed limit is for our type of vehicle. Okay. Good. Right. So what's the normal rules for the driving lane uh, in terms of what lane to driving? So we, we might have like more than one lane to drive in today. Yeah. Um, so what would, be, what would we be thinking with that? Um, the left lane is just normal driving. Awesome, and you know when you've overtaken, how would you know it's safe to move back into the left? Because um, that's what we should always look to do, you know, until we've sort of, unless we can justify staying in the right, because we might overtake and then there's only a little-ish gap and it might be worth actually staying in the right and continuing to overtake. It's sometimes no point in moving back in, it'll just cause problems. Yeah. But we will generally move in. How would we know it? safe to and we don't want to cut this car up after we um leaving a big enough gap and how would you be able to figure that out any ideas you um, know you might have watched some videos before or done a bit of research on this um looking in the mirror because where does this show um straight behind so if you see them in that mirror they've got to be behind you right yeah as long as you remember the color and the make and well you know, not looking at the wrong car. Yeah. But but you will be if you're looking for it because it'll start to appear from this very corner here, you know, because it's on the left and you're on the right, so it'll start to appear here. As soon as it is, if you haven't already, you pop that signal on. Why is it important that when we do lane changes that the signal flashed a couple of times before we actually change lanes? Do you think? Um gives them a warning on what you're gonna do. Yes. Borderline pointless in signalling as you go. Yeah. Okay, so that's the timing in, t in terms of changing lanes. Or, and, and, and same again, you know, when we move out, we won't leave it till we're right up behind and then check the mirrors. By the time we move out, we're right up behind them. If they break, not even going to be very good. So the timing would be, you know, way back, mirrors early, signal on, and moving out early as well in terms of uh, passing a vehicle. Um. So yeah, we're going to be using 5th, 6th gear, we want to try and 
base it on the speed limit that we can do. Uh, if we, if it's it's, it's going to be 50 the first road that we go on. If we can do 50, we will. Have you ever dealt with any merges before? Where the road merges two lanes to one? Um, I don't think so. Well, the road merges two to one um, <laughs> a couple of times on the road that we're going to go on. Any ideas what you'd look out for to know it's about to merge? Because like anything, if we identify it before, it's going to be a, a damn sight easier that we know it's coming up. Um, there'll be like the beginning of a new lane. Yeah. So space could widen. Yeah. Um, if it's going to open up, that is, from one to two. But if it's going to merge, I think that's a little bit more dangerous when it merges because space narrows and if people aren't paying attention, people are going to be in the wrong place side by side and there isn't going to be the room for us, especially if somebody's accelerating to pass. So we want to be ultra aware. We're going to have basically, like I say, a space narrowing, so there's going to be arrows normally on the lane that runs out. Oh, yeah. There'll be a couple of curved white arrows. So if you're in the left lane, you check centre and right. What's coming up behind? Is anything speeding up and going to whiz past last second? Is it already at the side? If you're in, if you're in the right lane for whatever reason, you check your centre and your left. left. Let's talk about lane changes when we're actually changing lane. Why would it be dangerous, do you think, to have a full-on blind spot check on the move at these sort of speeds that we're going to go at, go travel at? Um, because you'll travel a long distance in the time that it takes you to check all around. Yeah. So we're going to do what it's... So we could miss something in front, can we? Brake lights coming on or something cracking off in front. So we're going to do what's called a sideways glance. All right, have you saw that anybody do that before or heard of it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So could you show me how you'd have a sideways glance? If you just have your head forward as though you're driving normally, you check the two mirrors. If you, let's say you change lanes to the right, so you check centre and right, you might already have a signal on and then a quick sideways glance. That's it. Try and be a little bit quicker with it. So a bit more if you watch me, a bit more like, and get that head back forward as quick as possible. But yeah. get a good reach, not a good reach. Basically, keep your body really still, just head and neck. Check, back, just having a little quick go of that. Awesome. And the trick is keep your hands and your arms still on the steering wheel when you do it. Don't change lanes till you're actually looking back forwards. Yeah. So don't feel, the don't feel rushed, yeah. basically. And keep your signal on until you've completed your manoeuvre and you've landed in the new lane so people don't think you're changing your mind. That's about it really. If we if we build up speed with um, any sort of conviction we can look to block change. We've done any block gear changes before. Yeah. And how can that be beneficial? Um, you can just like if you if you like increase speed quickly you don't have to like take time and go into each gear mm. you can just like go straight to the gear that you should be in yeah exactly and if you do what you said and you don't block change you'll change gear and it'll engine brake anyway when you lift the clutch up so you're just you're wasting fuel as well by doing it so by not block changing depending on the, your style of driving sometimes yeah and what you're doing okay so I think that's it really uh, we're not going to look at slip roads today I just want to I just want to bring in driving faster with cars around us having to deal with merges the possibility of changing lanes and moving back in just keep it as that today and then we can yeah. add on to this i'm thinking next lesson yep. is that all right yeah all right so if you can reverse us out of here head to the uh, exit of the car park turn right up to the junction at the top turn left heading towards the roundabout on the main road the roundabout and you're hoping it's going to stick in the right lane and not peel left so if you 
very careful there when entering roundabouts. Now, don't worry about changing lanes, it is our priority and they are behind giveaway lines. If we can, we will help them, okay, in future. We've got the slip road coming, I'll check your mirrors for your escape route. Ease off to give that white car time. Cut back on the gas so the silver course doesn't get into your inside there. Checking your centre and your right mirror. Can you see the road merging, narrowing here? Paint coming in and road space tightening. Well done. Keep the speed up and block from three to five. Take your time now with that gear change. Centre in your left mirror, but folks, I'm building up speed. You're doing 41, we could be doing 50. Pop a single on, check your mirrors. How are we looking over there? Finish it off with a quick sideways glance and look back forward for the lane change. Fantastic, nice and smooth and easy. Lovely. Cancel the signal. That's a slip road there. Can you see from the small road markings? Yeah. So just two lanes here as we follow down. And we could go into sixth gear, just keep the gear stick palm towards you so it doesn't bounce to neutral. Lovely. Check your middle mirror and your right mirror. Anything behind that course? Yeah. Anything happening in front? Look, you see brake lights are just easing off. Your lane positioning is lovely. You seem really steady with it. And with your speed, we're doing a good job there. So it's, uh, it's filling me with confidence. How are you feeling? Yeah. yeah. Fine. We're just going to keep following the road ahead. Still 50, look, as you can see from the repeaters, the reminders pinned on the lampposts. There's a green sign there with three dashes in it. means there's an exit coming up but we're not going to take that we're just going to stay on this road okay if we were taking that we'd signal that 300 yard marker anything behind us or anything at the side going to cut us up in the right door mirror try and keep that speed at 50 now if you can so again with the eyes it's, it's, it's speedometer road speedometer road making adjustments with the right foot Remember it's 50, so when you're looking at that speedometer, be adjusting the right foot to suit. I will train you on cruise control. We've got a silver car on the left here. Do you see it, Lauren? Yeah. Yeah? If you keep at 50, will that silver car be okay? Check your left door mirror. Yeah. yeah. Keeping at 50, keeping at 50. So it's going to be national speed limit, two road, two lanes, but that, that's not the reason it's a dual carriageway, it's because of that central barrier. So this white car could move in and cut us up, so don't sort of see what I mean. Yeah. So always expect that before you speed up. Never speed up really when something's at the side of your passenger because they've probably got one thing already planned out in their mind and aren't really versatile enough to adjust or spot it in time a lot of the time I would think. Or so I see. So, still national speed up. Well done there, speeding it up. Have we got anything behind us? Okay, we'll be at the speed in a matter of a second, so it is as good as behind you that. And then we've got that one in front. Ease off, ease off, ease off. And stay off now. Cover the brake, cover the clutch, because we've got signs for the roundabout coming up. Another check behind. It's quite a good distance away now, isn't it? But it will catch up at the roundabout if we slow for any significant period, which we might need to do. Telling us to reduce speed now, and we've got 300 yards away to the green signs. So. At the roundabout, we're going to go um, straight. Now we're going to go left. So check the centre and left mirror. Signal left. Start braking. Brake, 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 brake. Going to be forty on the roundabout and new road. Brake, brake, brake. From six to two. Keep braking now. Looking at the same time. Clutch up. Do we need to put it back down? Keep centre of your lane. Oh, I'm very impressed with that, Laura. I thought you'd have definitely stopped because that one coming, you've um, you've impressed me. Left signal on and keep left because it's two lanes, look, so that's, we've got the merge over. Check your centre and your right mirror. You keep speeding up because it, we know it's 40 from the old signs there before the roundabout. Do you remember? Yeah. Cancel the signal because we've done the roundabout. And the speed limit's going to be? 60. Yeah. Dual carriageway or single? Uh, what would make this a dual carriageway? If there was a barrier. Yeah. Between. That's it. Hey, did you find all that?
take. Keep speeding up and we can see the answer. Yeah. Anything going to cut us up last second and come through the gap? Fine then. Block change four to six. I'm going to have to take the silver. Let's go to six. Let's get to 70 and then see. Because we can justify being here now because we're actually gaining on the silver. Do you see what I mean? There's a reason. There's a justification. So just check, keep your eyes on your speedometer. That's it, just easing off then, Lauren, taking action. And to, I think to overtake this would mean breaking the speed limit. So the option now is to move back to the left, really. You all right with doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Where else are you gonna check before we go? Sideway. Good. Awesome. Seem fairly steady with this. Fairly, fairly all right with it. Speed changes to 50 around the corner, so just ease off. We shouldn't need to brake. Just let that speed re reduce there. Date with your, unless you already did it and missed it. Because as we ease off, things can catch up, can't it? So we'll expect things to overtake and stuff. Do you see the green sign? Not the one for Ring Road West with the arrow, but the one behind it. Yeah. What does that mean, do you think? In 300 yards, there's two. Yeah, so two possibilities. Now, always oh, check your centre mirror for what's behind you, right mirror for what's to the side. We might need to do a lane change. So if it does, signal on, check, check, sideways, because something could appear here, all right? Now, do we need to move for the, so that's the entry for the first layer, or do we need to move for the second one? I think we will. Check your mirror, signal right, sideways glance, and across we come, steer. Keep your speed up, keep your speed up, keep your speed up, keep your speed up, faster, 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 or else we become a rolling road block, road block there, everything catches up, and everything becomes dangerous for everybody around us. Now, make sure you're doing 50, or else that could happen, people get aggravated, annoyed, and they'll start cutting you up, undertaking, which you shouldn't be doing. Keep centre of your lane. We actually want this lane for where we're going. Sometimes I might say, well, let's move back to the left, but actually... For a, for a period of time, it felt like we shouldn't have been here. But then when it, when it was time to move back, we actually need to be here. A bit ridiculous, weren't it, doing 48. And uh, we don't want to be sat in their blind spots either. And I think for doing 50, we'd actually end up gaining a bit and sitting in their blind spots. So um, be make sure what you're always doing, you're driving just reasonable based on the road and traffic conditions, yeah? Yeah. The road split off now, we're in the correct lane for where we're going, Chadderston, because you see it marked on the floor markings there. Check your left mirror for any late people that are going to cut you up, because if they are, we better let them, really, or else there's going to be a big crash there, and we'd probably be involved. Ease off in case there's backing up traffic. The traffic lights could have changed, or it could be a rush hour, especially when you're coming around the bends on, um, at high speed. When we get to the roundabout, we'll turn left. First exit. Just remember you'll be going from six to, I don't know, three to whatever you feel is appropriate. It's lovely. Well done. So, as I said earlier uh, when the camera was off, I, I think going on those roads to be confident, I think you've done a really good job there. You seem really comfortable with it. Did you feel it? Great. And I think you have to be at a certain place with your skill level, your understanding, and the way you feel about your driving in order to go on and, and get a good result like that. Yeah. As I know, a lot of people will be on there at, on less than 10. Very, very rare I ever do that with anybody, you know. Because for me, it has to be right and the risk has to be managed correctly. Yeah. So well done, we'll definitely be building on that next session, won't we? Yeah. Fancy some slip roads next week, a bit longer driving maybe, a bit longer distances. Yeah. That'd be good. And if we want, we can drop back in on the parallel path, perhaps, we get time. Yeah. You passed your theory, yeah? Yeah. yeah.